Let's get into the word on this morning. We're coming from Luke chapter 23. Luke 23. We're going to look at verses 32 through 43. So that's Luke 23 verses 32 through 43. Very familiar text. All right. Start at verse number 32, it says, And there were also two other male factors led with him to be put to death. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. And the male factors, one on the right hand and the other on the left, then said, Jesus, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. And the people stood beholding. And the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself. If he be Christ, the chosen God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar. And saying, if thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And a superscription also was written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. And one of the male factors which were hanged railed on him, saying, if thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Doest not thou fear God, seeing that thou art in the same condemnation? And we did, and we indeed justly, for we received the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto you, today shalt thou be with me in paradise. If you're taking notes on today, I am coming from the topic, the man in the middle. The man in the middle. Here, Grace Center, what we see is that Jesus is placed between two thieves. By definition, a thief is someone that will take something uh, from someone else and usually is for their own benefit. All right? They will take something that does not uh, belong to them and in most cases they will use it to their own benefit. Which contrasts with the nature of Jesus because when Jesus came, he said, I only came to give and not take. In other words, Grace Center, he came to give us life through his blood. He came to empty himself so that we can be full of him. When Jesus came to earth from his uh, time in glory, when he came to earth, he was all God and all man. He had uh, both natures wrapped up in one. And uh, for those who have been uh, watching and uh, the members of the Grace Center already know, that's what we call a hyperstatic union. It is when uh, someone, in this case Jesus, which it has only been Jesus, is that when you have the the, the nature of the divine, all right, and the nature of a human, that was Jesus. It's a hypostatic union. He's all God and he's all man. There were times when you, when you saw the limitations of Jesus by his human nature. Yeah. When he came to earth, there were times when we can read in scripture we see the, the human side of Jesus come out. Uh, for one, when 
he was here on earth, he could only be at one place at one time. Uh, you saw him being tired when he met the woman at the well. Uh, you saw him being weak in the garden when he uh, was on his way to the cross and he just wanted someone to pray for him. You saw the their human side of Jesus. But there were other times when you saw the divine side of Jesus. You saw the the power of his deity. You saw the power of his deity when he stood at the bow of the ship and he told the raven storm to cease. You saw the power of his deity when the woman with the issue of blood, she went to all of the doctors and she did everything in her power to stop the blood that was flowing from her. But when she reached Jesus and touched the hem of his garment, what was flowing out of her had to stop. You saw the power of his deity when people were following him and they got hungry. And Jesus set the people down in groups of 50 and he took a little boy's lunch of two, two pieces of fish and five loaves of bread and he fed thousands. You saw the power of his deity when the disciples were in a storm and Jesus, he made the water turned solid. He was able to walk on a solid surface to them. There were times when we saw his human nature. There were times when we saw his divine nature. But right here in the text, we see him putting on the human side of him. He put aside his deity and he became the man in the middle. We can learn a lot about Jesus, Grayson, as far as how he handled the pressure of people. Yeah. We see how Jesus uh, treated people when they rejected him and falsely accused him and they wanted him to just go away. <laughs> they spat on him. They, they beat him and they did all types of things to him. And uh, I've said this before, but one of the most disrespectful things you can do to a person is to spit on them. But they did it to our Savior. They totally disrespected him. And we see Jesus exhibiting self-control. Uh, I don't know if I could have had any type of self-control if you would have spat on me. Um, I, I have no doubt that you would have found me in handcuffs. You would have found me on uh, uh, Channel 3, Channel 4, and Channel 9 News if someone spat on me because I would have not exhibited any kind of self-control. Jesus is still working on me. I'm, I'm trying to be like him each and every day. But if you spit on me, uh, look, I'm a man of God. I love Jesus. But to spit on someone is one of the most disrespectful things you can possibly do to a person. But we see our Savior having such self-control. But not only that, Grace said, we, we also see Jesus praying for them. And they were trying to kill him. Hmm. They were trying to take his life and he still prayed for them. The question is, how many of us will pray for our enemies? My Lord. How many of us get on our knees and call out the names of those who are disrespectful to us? Who want to uh, put shame on your name? Who uh, are trying to bring you down? Who may be spreading rumors and accusing you of things that you have never done and just totally disrespecting you? How many of us will pray for our enemies? Jesus, he didn't pray for them when things were going well, but he prayed for them when he was in agony and he was in pain. He had been beaten. 
He had nails in his feet and wrists, but he still prayed for them. This example of our Savior, Grayson, it gives us no excuse for not being able to pray for those who will mistreat us. Oh, what an example he has for us. We have uh, no excuse for not uh, uh, being compassionate and, and, and praying for others when they mistreat us. It's something that we all need to work on. But these two thieves here. These thieves, one of them uh, continue to to mock and reject Jesus at the end of his life. Now, we don't know the the time and the day that we're going to leave this earth. But this thief here that's rejecting Jesus, he knew that at in a few moments, in a few minutes. In a few hours, he was going to die, and he still rejected Jesus. <laughs> Let me say that again. I, I want that to marinate. This one thief, he he knew that in a in a matter of minutes, okay, in a matter of hours, he was going to die, but he still rejected Jesus. That's a sad state of affairs. Do you know anyone like that? Or the better question is, is that possibly you? Mm. Are you rejecting the saving grace of an almighty God to save your soul? Mm. Perhaps this thief who was rejecting Jesus uh, uh, rejected him because watch this. He wanted to join in with the crowd. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe he wanted to fit in with the crowd. Yeah, the crowd that was at the crucifixion of Jesus continued to, to rail at Jesus. And maybe the one who was dying was simply still trying to fit in all that he was about to be out of here. Do you know anyone like that who who tries to fit in with individuals when you know it's to your own detriment. You know it's to your own downfall. This, this one thief is about to die. And he was still trying to fit in with others. You see, it doesn't pay to follow the crowd. You may say that it's not cool to follow Christ. Well, my response is it's not cool to go to hell either. It's, 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 it's one thing to follow individuals who are on the right track. It's another thing to follow others where they're going down a path that is detrimental to your soul. It's detrimental to how you're going to reach your destiny in the long run. It's, it's better not to follow individuals who are going to take us down a path that we're going to go down and regret every going. This one thief here rejected Jesus and he was about to die. But the other thief, great sinner, he made up his own mind and he was like, uh, hey, Jesus, <laughs> uh, I can speak up for myself. Uh, I don't know what I don't know what he's talking about, but I have my own mouth, my own tongue, my own my own senses. I can speak up for myself. And he told Jesus, like, do me a favor. When you come into your kingdom, will you please remember me? The other thief was like, I'm not going to pay any attention to what that guy over there is saying. Now, I don't know if these two thieves ran together. I don't know if there was homeboys and they got caught together. I have no idea. But the other thief was like, you know what? I'm going to separate myself from you. And I'm going to ask Jesus, I'm going to ask the Savior, the anointed one, the Messiah, remember me when you come into your kingdom. The other thief, he realized, great son, that he was in a tight spot. <laughs> there are some times when we all will find 
ourselves in a tight spot. Here this thief, he made up his own mind that he needed to talk to Jesus. He made up in his mind that uh, I can speak up for my own self. And he, he told Jesus, yep, I, I, I messed up and I need you right now. I'm in a tight spot right now because just like the other thief in a few minutes, in a few moments, in a few hours, he's about to die. He's in a in a tight spot. Uh, and I don't know about you, Grace Center, but there have been times in my life where I have been in a tight spot. Have you ever been in a tight spot? Oh, don't be shamed. Have you ever been in a place that you found yourself in? You're like, how did I ever get here? How did I ever wind up in this place? Have you ever found yourself in a tight spot? This one thief, the other thief, he found himself in a tight spot. He said, I've been some places I should not have been. I, I've stolen from people. I've lied on people. I've done some things wrong. Lord, Savior, Jesus, I have found myself in a tight spot and I need you right now. Oh, raise your hands wherever you're out there virtually. If you have ever been in a tight spot and you needed the saving grace, you needed Jesus to come through you. You needed Jesus to forgive you and cleanse you and to give you just one more chance. Have you ever been there before? The man acknowledged that he was wrong and he asked Jesus to remember him. The thing I love about Jesus, grace son, is that uh, uh, Jesus didn't condemn the thief. Right. He never condemned that thief. Now watch this. Watch this. The thief that asked Jesus to remember him when he gets his kingdom Jesus never asked him to go into all of the details as far as why he should remember him. When you read your Bibles, it is nowhere that Jesus asked him to give a full explanation of what he was talking about. Mm. Mm. I can close the doors of the church right there all by itself. Mm. When, when the other thief, you said, Jesus, please remember me when you... Go into your kingdom. Jesus never responds back and say, well, just why? <laughs> Jesus never responds back and said, well, can you give me some more information on why I should remember you? Mm, 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 mm. Jesus never comes back and say, well, give me some more details. I need to hear some more. Why should I remember you? What? Did you do? Where did you go? Uh, give me some more info. Give me the 411. Jesus never asked that thief to go into the details of why he should remember him. That tells us that the God we serve is more concerned with us coming back home instead of asking us and having us give him all the details of where you've been for so long. Thank you, Jesus. For one, God already knows the details. He's just happy <laughs> to see you come home again. Mm. Jesus never asked him to go into all of the details. Jesus, he only responded back uh, by saying, yep, I'm going to remember you. But not only am I going to remember you, you're going to be with me again. Mm. You're going to be with me again. Now watch this. He was going to be with Jesus quicker than he realized. As a matter of fact, as soon as Jesus uh, uh, were to close his eyes and the other thief were to close his eyes, they will be with one another in paradise. Mm. He would be with Jesus the same place he asked Jesus to remember him from. He was going to be there himself. Grace Center, we have two thieves here and they both have decisions to make. One thief rejected him. The other thief received him. They both had decisions. 
And in life, we all have decisions. Some are heavier than others, but we all must make decisions on a daily basis. But no decision that you will ever make will be more important than placing your soul in the hands of Jesus. Let me say that again. There will be no decision you will ever make that will be more important than placing your life, placing your soul in the hands of Jesus. Not getting married. Not by taking a job. Not by moving to a certain place. No decision you will ever make will be more important for your eternal soul than placing your life in the hands of Jesus. Both thieves were wrong, but only one decided to place his eternal life to the hands to the man in the middle. <laughs> Jesus was the man in the middle. They first, that they both found themselves in a tight spot in a situation where they needed Jesus. They both needed him, but only one decided to make the right choice. And his choice was to place his eternal life, his eternal soul in the hands of Jesus. I'm closing now, but let, let me close this little, this little story. Um, this past Friday night, you know, um, the family and I, we decided to go out. And, and get something to eat uh, at this restaurant. You know, it was a long week for me, a very long week for me, probably one of my longest weeks I've ever had before. But it was a long week, and, you know, we all decided, well, let's just go to get something to eat. It was Veterans Day, you know, so we said, let's, let's go uh, get something to eat, and, and, and they decided to take me out and so forth, and uh, we, we would go to the restaurant and so forth, you know, we, 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 we sit down, we're looking over the menu, we're talking, we're having a good time. And then uh, our waiter, <laughs> our waiter comes to our table. Uh, he, 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 he comes to our table and, 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 and Grace Center, he uh, began to talk. Um, um, he began to talk. And, and when he began to talk, Grace Center, um, we could barely hear anything that he was saying. Uh, we, we, we don't know if it was his first day on the job, if he was nervous, if he was scared, if he was afraid of something. We don't even know. We don't know if he had some warrants out for his arrest. We don't know what was going on. But but uh, he was talking and we could barely hear him. We kept saying, excuse me? He'll say something like, um, we, we, we can't hear you. Uh, and, and, and we realized it wasn't just with us. It was with the other tables as well. He'll go to the other tables. And, uh, and he'll say something to them and they could barely hear him as well. Like, what is, is this, is this a, a, a game? Is, is there any cameras? I mean, what is happening here? You know, are we being pumped right now? This, this, this waiter, as he would talk, we could barely hear anything he was saying. You know, his mouth was moving. We could clearly see his mouth moving, but we could not hear the words coming out of his mouth. Hmm. Huh. And as I was uh, still preparing this, this sermon for today, I, I realized something here in the text, Grace said. I'm, I'm closing. I realized something here in the text is that uh, Jesus is perfectly placed in the middle of two thieves. One on the left side, one on the right side. Jesus is not placed too far to the right where he could not hear the other thief on the other end. He's not placed too far on the left side where he could not hear the other thief on the other end, but he is perfectly placed in the middle. He's the man in the middle, so if one needed to talk, he could clearly hear them. If the one on the right could talk, and was talking to him, he could clearly hear him. He was the man in the middle. In other words, they both had access to him. Come here, Grace Center. They both had access to the Savior. If 
One decided to talk on the left side. Jesus could hear him. Jesus could talk back with him. They could carry on a conversation. If the one on the right side wanted to talk with Jesus, since Jesus was the man in the middle, Jesus could hear him and he could hear Jesus. Jesus is perfectly placed in the middle so there would be no uh, miscommunication as they're both talking so if Jesus was to get to heaven and the other thief missed out there would be no excuse well I could not hear you uh, I, I, I don't know what happened it was some miscommunication no Jesus was in the middle of the both of them they both had access to Jesus come here Grace Center we all have access to Jesus. We all can communicate with Jesus. We can talk to him. He can talk to us. There will be no miscommunication when it's time for us to communicate with the Savior. So if we need Jesus to save our souls, we can say, Jesus, God, forgive me for I have sinned. Lord, forgive me. I want to be in right standing with you. Cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Lord, I need you right now. I've done some things I should not have done. Lord, right now I'm in a tight spot and I need you. Lord, I'm applying for these jobs. Nothing is happening. Open up this door for me. Lord, I'm applying for this home loan. I'm being denied. Lord, help me go to the place where I really want to go to. Lord, they're talking about me. They're disrespecting me. Lord, help me because I'm in a tight spot. We all have access to Jesus. These two thieves had access to the Savior, but only one of them decided to do something with the access that he had. One denied him. He was going to die in a few minutes and he still rejected the Savior. The other thief had a decision that he also had to make. He had access to Jesus and he decided to do something with the access that he had. Grace and what are you doing with the access that you have to the Savior. Are you communicating with him? Are you having discussions with him? Are you talking to God saying, Lord, right now, I need you. But watch this. It's always, it's, it's not always us asking what God can do for us, but what we also can do for him. Lord, what do you need for me to do for you today? Where do you want me to go today? Who do you want me to talk to today? We all have access to God. These both, these two thieves, they both had access to the Savior. Jesus was the man in the middle of the both of them. One rejected him. One received him. One is in a place even till today that he, I'm pretty sure, is kicking himself and realizing I've messed up to this same day. Mm. Over 2,000 years ago when that took place. And he's still there today. But the other thief who made the right decision, he's in a much better place for these past 2,000 years. We all have access to Jesus. We all have access to the man in the middle. We all have access to the Savior. The question is, what are you doing with the access that you have? If you're not saved, I pray you will receive the saving grace of our Savior. If you are saved, I pray that you will continue to communicate with God and have that fellowship with God and continue to commune with God. We all have access to him. But we all stand in those lines on that day 
there will be no excuse because we all will have and had access to him. He was the man in the middle. The virtual doors of the church are open at this time. The invitation is extended. If you're not saved, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your personal Savior, you can receive him on today. You don't have to be like that thief that rejected Jesus when he had access to him. You have full access right now. You have the opportunity right now to receive him. If that's you, if you want to be saved, if you want uh, um, to make sure that when you leave this earth, that you will spend eternity with God, you can say this prayer with me right now. Say, dear God, thank you for thinking about me. Thank you for having me on your mind. On today, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus came, that Jesus died, and that Jesus rose from the grave. If you have prayed that prayer, you're saved. You have made the right decision. You have made uh, the most important decision of your entire life. And if you have prayed that prayer, we would love to hear from you. Send us a private message, email, comment in the comment section. However you need to reach out to us, we would love to connect with you. For all others, if you have any special prayer requests, let us know. We would love to stand in the gap with you as well. All right, it is tithes and offering time. Uh, amen. We have several different ways in which you may be able to give. Uh, if you go to our website, thegracecenterga.org, click on that give link. It has several different ways in which you may be able to give. You can give through the website itself. Uh, you can download our GiveLify app and give that way. Uh, you can give through our cash app, which is uh, the Grace Center GA. Uh, or you can mail your checks or money orders to us at our P.O. Box, which should be on the website and in the description there as well. Uh, once again, the website is thegracecenterga.org. Amen. Well, I hope and pray that this message has blessed you on today. I hope that, you know, if you have been... Um, rejecting Jesus or maybe you uh, are saved but you have just kind of straight away I, I pray that you can get back and right standing with him and begin to communicate with him uh, once again amen let us pray as we are dismissed on today well dear God we thank you for this word we thank you for uh, allowing this word to go forth I pray that this word has fell on the hearts of your people um, who really, really needed to hear this on today. For those out there who uh, received your son, Jesus Christ, as their Lord and their Savior on today, I pray that you will send someone across their path to help them in this new walk with your son. For all others, any uh, special prayer requests that they have, I pray that you will meet the needs of them and even give them some of their wants as well, Lord, where you know all of the details and exactly what they are in need of. Thank you for the ones who gave, blessed them tremendously, blessed the ones who wanted to give but just didn't have it. And Lord, as we leave this place, but never ever leave your presence, please go before us and make every cricket place straight in our lives. We give you all of the praise, all of the glory, and all of the honor. It's in Jesus Christ's name that we do pray. Amen. All right, family, I love you. Take care until next Sunday. Take care.